All right, so this is the final video. And um, we are going to take a look at how the code affects the robotic arm in real time. Just turning on my um, Raspberry Pi right now. I'll also show you how I use the um, bench top power supply. So there's a couple of things that you need to do before before the robotic arm will work. You go to accessories. Sorry, preferences. Raspberry Pi configuration. Go to interfaces. Make sure the serial port is enabled and serial console is disabled your um, your arm will not work unless unless those settings are uh, are set now let's open up idle i'm using idle 3 And let's open up our um, the file that we'll be working with. Okay, and um, here is the familiar file that we saw in the GitHub repository. And um, remember, we discussed all this, um, all this stuff here. So now, um, let's turn on the power supply. See how it says 1.3 volts there. So I'm going to bring it up to nine. I'm going to just turn the knob really slowly and bring the power up to 9.5 or 10. Notice how the amperage, the current increases. The knob above is to limit the amount of current. So if you wanted to limit that, you could um, you could just set it that way. But I, I have had I haven't had any uh, use for it, so I haven't uh, really messed with it. So let's go all the way up to ten. And these knobs are really sensitive, so you know, um, Robotis, who makes the Dynamixel motors, they recommend that you run this at uh, for production you run it at 11.5 volts but we also have to go and uh, you know i have the i have these cables here this is like a test lead set and um, what i do is i'm using my helping hands this is one of the things that i ask you to buy and then, you know, with some um, with some alligator clips, I just clip the uh, the power the power cable. So you see here the the power, the ground, and the data are going right to this um, to this cable, and then that goes to the arm. So that's how you want to connect yours. Just go ahead and run it right now. We'll hit F5 on the keyboard. And we'll keep an eye here on the robot. Okay. Now, the robot will iterate um, 
will iterate five times because I have it. I have the yeah, for loop set to five. But um, you know, obviously, we can kill it just by turning off the power or um, resetting, the, uh, restarting the shell. So watch uh, when I when I restart the shell. Watch how it just kind of dies mid-range. So I'll wait until the right moment here. Okay, I'll do it now. Okay. Now, you can't really move the motors right now because torque is applied. So if you kill the power, you notice that torque goes to zero, right? And then you can manipulate the arm any way you want. You can also set uh, torque to zero programmatically. Um, but um, I haven't really had a need to do that yet. So let's go ahead and turn the power back on and restart it. Uh, this time I'm only going to do one iteration. So I'll fire it back up. Now notice how I can put the arm, you know, uh, in any pretty much in any position that I like. Um, you know, I can move it over this way. So now if I start it. It'll go back to it'll go back to the neutral position. So it's going back. This is neutral right here. Okay, now it's starting up again. So as you can see, this is just a plain old um, toilet roll core made out of cardboard. All right, so I'm gonna create code, or I'm gonna up, I'm gonna modify one of these um, one of these uh, instruction packets to show you how uh, you can uh, speed it up or slow it down. Okay. All right, so I just modified this one line. You know. The original line is above here. This is the this was the original line, and this is the new line. I'm just commenting out the the original line just so we can see how much faster I'm going. So I basically replaced uh, 96 here with FA here. So FA is a speed of 250, and 96 is 150. So 150 was the original speed. And uh, this thing, uh, I believe you can go up to 1100 in terms of speed, so it can go very, very fast. Um, so I'll show you what it, I'll show you what it looks like before the modification. I'll comment the line below. And uh, we're gonna run the iteration one time, okay? So I'm going to hit a 5. So the change is made in the move far right method. So we'll only see the We'll only see the thing speed up when it goes far right, okay? So it's coming up right now. Okay, so that's normal. That's that's normal speed. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna comment out the original line. And we're going to implement the new line.
it's going to be really quick so you're going to you're going to see it really quick right now now see that you could actually hear it Okay, you see how fast that was? That was almost twice as fast as before. Again, uh, the way I showed you guys how to calculate the checksum is um, I went hex, you know, F A, then I clicked on decimal, and 250. So once I had changed. Once I had changed that to FA, I needed to recalculate the checksum. So I grabbed the, everything from the ID down to the last parameter. I say copy, bring up the checksum calculator, paste, calculate, gives me A5. And then you know we re we re uh, reduce that by one, and it'll be a four. Now watch if I say if I say a three here. Watch what happens. So it doesn't go far right. You see that? I'm going to go ahead and kill the power now. So that's a that's a simple example of how you can alter the the instruction packets. And so, since you all have my code, you can pretty much play with it. And um, and even if you have only one motor connected to the arm, you'll uh, still be able to see movement on that one motor. Because, for example, you would just have to focus on everything that says ID, you know, servo one, basically. So, this is servo one here. You know, servo one. So if you just look at all the comments that I made, you'll be able to see what affects servo one, and, and then you can start playing that way. And then you just, and then you just leave. Uh, you know, you you uh, comment out any anything, everything that's not servo one, and then that'll go faster. And then you can comment out any everything that's like servo three and servo four, and then you can play with servo one and servo two all right guys i hope you enjoyed my um my work here and um have a wonderful day something else i wanted to show you guys is um if you wanna if you wanna transfer files so, for example, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to back up your your Python files, uh, one thing that I do, one thing that I'm doing here is, I sign up with a Box account, and so I just um, I log in, and I back up my. I back up my Python files here, and then um, and then I just retrieve them uh, from my PC. So because obviously we're running we're running on the Raspberry Pi here, and you know I don't want to mess with like USB sticks and all that stuff. So this is something that's been very helpful to me. But there are a ton of videos on YouTube on how to um, how to back up and restore your 
your uh, Raspberry Pi.